From KPRC2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Now, the big news that upended the news cycle this past week was the Manhattan grand jury that indicted former President Donald Trump for his role in the alleged payoff of a porn star. And as of that, this taping, perhaps even more. The speculation has been building for months with the former president attacking the district attorney ahead of the announcement and really stepped up the attacks after the indictment was handed down. It was what is now typical Trump style, full of insults and hurling accusations against those he called thugs and radical left monsters and calling it an attack on our country, which he now calls a third world country. I'm fortunate in times like this to have KPRC2 legal and analyst, analyst Brian Weiss with us to make uh, some sense about what's happened so far. Good to see you. Great to see you, Cam. Yeah. The, the, the arraignment that we are looking at right now, we don't even know the charges. It seems like there's a lot of conversation about something we don't know the specifics about yet. Right now, this indictment may be like the iceberg that sunk the Titanic. We only know and can speculate about the 15 percent above the North Atlantic, the 85 percent, of course, beneath the North Atlantic that sunk that ship. What we do know is that it's a indictment handed up by a New York County Manhattan grand jury that contains 30 plus charges, mm. largely involving the payoff, the hush money scheme involving adult film star Stephanie Clifford, AKA Stormy Daniels, and the falsification of business records mm. on the part of Donald Trump in conjunction with Michael Cohn, his former fixer, that labeled those payments legal fees instead of what it was, hush money designed to impact and influence the 2016 presidential election weeks before we went to the ballot box. So arraignment schedule happened on Tuesday. At that time, we expect to know more specifically about the charges. You've told me off camera here that the difference between New York and Texas is pretty big in terms of the information we may eventually know about what he's being charged with. Yes, absolutely. If Donald Trump were to be charged with tampering with the government record in Texas. First of all, it's a felony if you have the intent to harm or defraud another. We'll talk about that in a second. But the indictment itself would be bare bones that on or about April 2nd, 2022, Donald Trump did then and there in Harris County, Texas, knowingly, intentionally, unlawfully falsify a government record to wit. That's it. On the other hand, in New York State, we have what are called speaking indictments, an indictment much like in the federal system that runs on for pages mm. that tells a story. It is more than just the who, what, where, when, and how. It will tell us in detail how our former president allegedly engaged in wrongdoing against the people of the state of New York, and it may involve charges other than what we're merely speculating about the payoff to Stormy Daniels. I want to make sure people know we're not talking anything about the politics of all of this. We're talking about just the law. The politics will take care of itself. There's already a lot of that now based upon nothing. I mean, we don't know what's in the indictment yet. So the politics is going crazy with this. But in terms of the actual indictment that it is now, there's going to be a lot of media about this. Is there any chance that the judge could maybe issue a gag order and something like this? The judge who Donald Trump will appear before at his arraignment Tuesday afternoon, Juan Merchon, a former Manhattan prosecutor, former assistant attorney general in the state of New York, former Nassau County prosecutor on Long Island. No nonsense. Calls balls and strikes, doesn't suffer fools gladly. He presided over the trial of the Trump organization mm -hmm. and the guilty plea of Alan Weisselberg, Donald Trump's longtime CFO. He actually has an instance where he got into it with one of Donald Trump's criminal lawyers. This is a situation where if Judge Marchand believes that he needs to maintain control and management direction of this case by issuing a gag order, make no mistake. We'll see that if, in fact, Judge Marchand thinks it's the right thing to do for the right reason. Okay, another thing relating to the legal aspect of all of this, I know that the political aspect, uh, Florida Governor DeSantis talked about, well, we're going to even we're going to help him not be extradited to New York if that's what he decides. The legal take on that is what? <laughs> Nonsense. You know, I have taught judges, prosecutors, and defense attorneys, they can say anything about anybody as long as they preface it with all due respect. Here we go. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Cam, with all due respect, this guy's a moron because we're talking about a Harvard-trained lawyer who should know better. Forget about something if we didn't sleep through government class about the full faith and credit clause about giving effect to other states' legal rulings. But in the narrow legal scheme of extradition, 
it is a very simple act and duty on the part of a governor of one state, what we call the asylum state where the defendant resides, mm -hmm. on the, and answering the response of the governor of the demanding state, Kathy Hochul in New York State. If that extradition request on its face states probable cause, that governor has no choice but to accede to that demanding state's request. And make no mistake, an indictment on its face is a finding of probable cause. So we have talked about this uh, in the past last week, in fact, on our program here. You dipped in via tape. <laughs> talking about the fact that this indictment that we have now, we were speculating he might be indicted, is the least of his worries, perhaps, based upon what potential indictments there are still out there pending against the former president? Well, I don't think there's a perhaps in that equation. Right now, we're looking at an ongoing investigation on the part of Fulton County, Atlanta DA, Fonnie Willis, involving Donald Trump and a host of his posse, of his clique, for attempting to rig the 2020 Georgia presidential election. In addition to that, Special Prosecutor Jack Smith, a take no prisoners, uh, as they say in the mob, made guy who is also investigating the former president for events involving the storming of the Capitol on January 6th and the Mar-a-Lago documents case mm -hmm. and possible obstruction of justice. As those cases reach critical mass, I believe they're going to create greater legal jeopardy for Donald Trump and his minions than the indictment that was handed up and will be handed up next week. What is the difference between the federal courts coming up with indictments and in this case in New York, the state Court. So there we're talking about different sovereigns. We're talking about at the state level, the state of New York, the people of the state of New York is the indictment will read versus Donald J. Trump charging state crimes, in this case, falsification of business records. The federal investigation, separate sovereign, the federal government turns on the violation of federal laws. In this case, insurrection, obstruction of justice tampering with government records in connection with both the January 6th storming of the Capitol and the Mar-a-Lago documents case. You've got dueling sovereigns, if you will, and make no mistake, it's what we learned as kids. Remember our moms used to tell us, hey, Cam, don't make that a federal case. Mm. And there's a reason, because the federal system is much more draconian, it's a fancy legal term for harsh, than most state systems. Donald Trump is not looking at any jail time in connection with the New York County case. On the other hand, if he's convicted in any of the other investigations involving federal law, he is certainly going to become a ward of the federal government if the jury convicts him. Is this likely to open a can of worms, an indictment against a former president on a local level as opposed to federal level? I've read that a local prosecutor can bring this against anybody. Um, it, well, you would think not against anybody, but that could perhaps change the dynamic, letting politics get in the mix. You know, any politician, any public figure, I don't care who you are, if you find yourself in the crosshairs of an investigation slash indictment slash trial, you are going to trot out the same refrain. This is a witch hunt. It's persecution. It's the criminalization of politics. But there's an old saying that prosecutors don't investigate defendants. They investigate crimes. And if you believe, as I hope we all do, that no man, no woman is above the law, what happened with this New York County grand jury is nothing more and nothing less than Alvin Bragg, who was elected by the people of his county two years ago, to investigate crimes occurring in her, his jurisdiction and to let the chips fall where they may. But you make a great point of the prosecutions that Donald Trump could likely see in the future. This prosecution, the Manhattan prosecution, in my estimation, is the runt of the litter. Thank you, Brian Weiss. Appreciate your time. Look forward to your analysis after the charges are laid out. I know you'll be back to talk about that. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, sir.